You know, well, look, we saw one of the miners just recently hold back some ounces, which was nice to see, um, um, you know, for something First Majestic has done many times over the last few years. And uh, nice to see another mining company, you know, come come to, uh, you know, the same conclusion that, you know, sometimes it's just best to hold back, you know, some of our production. And, and uh, but, you know, we're we're trading in a physical market. And, and unfortunately, you know, we do price our metal in the paper market. And, you know, it's the paper market where the issues, you know, do occur. So, you know, when you talk about what effect, you know, this whole Reddit, you know, uh, uh, movement has had on the mining sector, you know, it comes out of price. You know, of course, you know, metal prices are being buoyed, I think, by this new investor. And I, I'm super encouraged by it because, you know, this is a whole new group of millennials that otherwise hadn't looked at this market. You know, they were all caught up in, you know, different, you know, high tech stocks or, you know, you know, different things that they're investing in, uh, like GameStop and, you know, others, um, you know, the Robin Hood crowd and, 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 you know, all that group. So for them to actually start focusing on this little tiny market, silver, you know, which is, you know, you know, a $20 billion market, uh, uh, I think it's fantastic. So, you know, we're seeing sales uh, increase, physical sales increase uh, for sure. Our website, despite the fact we're selling silver at thirty dollars an ounce, which you know I'm almost embarrassed to, you know, actually be selling silver at such a premium. I'd love to be able to drop it, uh, but the volumes of, of sales are coming into the the website. Our and we're tiny, you know, compared to some of the you know bigger uh, dealers out there, uh, is pretty phenomenal. And, and uh, you know, I've not seen this type of volume of sales ever uh, in in the last uh, you know fifteen years. Well, mining companies have to sell their product. You know, it's just like, you know, well, what, what, what would uh, uh, Levi's do if they just made a bunch of jeans and kept them in the warehouse? You know, like it, it doesn't make any sense. You know, they, you know, they have costs, they have, you know, G&A, they got employees to pay. So there is a, a certain percentage of metal that we have to sell just to pay our bills. So, you know, we, we, you know, so we do holdbacks. It has to be for relatively short periods of time. And then we've done it in the past more of a, kind of a message to the other miners to try to get them to, you know, maybe do the same thing. Uh, and now we've seen another company do that. But, you know, for a Dory producer, uh, as First Majestic is, like we have three mines and each of these mines produce Dory bars. Your listeners should look at the difference between what a concentrate is versus what a Dory bar is. But Dory bar is, you know, basically just a block of silver with some other impurities, but it's not quite at the refined stage, but it's, you know, 93, 95%. You know, maybe 97% silver. So it takes very little effort to convert that up to a triple nine, you know, commercial bar that's you know sellable commercially. Um, but if you're producing a concentrate, which is just basically a you know uh, a pile of black dust, you know, that's got all kinds of you know pollutants and metals in it that has to go to a, a smelter to get heated up and burned down and then get separated through all kinds of different chemical processes. It's very expensive. Uh, to do it, and and, uh, the, and, and uh, you know we're fortunate enough we're not in that business. But you know for those mining companies that are in the concentrate selling business, it's much more difficult for them to hold back metal because they've got deals with the smelters, and they, you know they they deliver this pile of black dust powder to the smelter, and you tell the smelter, oh by the way, you know pull the silver out and put it aside on the side of the wall there. So and we'll, we'll talk to you, we'll, we'll try to figure out what to do with it later. They're gonna laugh at you and say, come on, like we've got an agreement in place where you're selling us this metal and we want it. So you can't hold it back even if you wanted to. And uh, you know, most of the uh, metal, most of the silver produced on a worldwide basis is in the form of concentrates. Well, the retail investor is the last to get access to the metal. Uh, you know, this is a very, very tight market. Um, silver, you know, depending on what stats you want to look at out there, um, in my opinion, has been in a deficit for well over a decade and likely three decades. The above ground supply of, of silver is at historic lows. Um, you know, e even the last run up in 2011 to $50 an ounce silver wiped out most of the family owned silver. You know, the jewelry, the, the the silverware, you know, the, the household silver that was just sitting in drawers, you know, for, for decades that was accumulated by families, that's basically all gone now. So the, the, the really the only big, big hordes of silver today is really in the ETFs. 
Um, and that is, you know, that, that, yeah, unless there's some major change where all of a sudden ETFs want to start putting supply out, well, maybe the SLV might because, you know, that's a paper uh, ETF versus, you know, the PSLV, which is uh, a physically driven uh, um, ETF. But there's really no hordes out there anymore. And um, so if you're um, uh, one of the banks, it doesn't matter who, but Scotia or HSBC or, 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 um, or Scotia's out of the business now, but, you know, JP Morgan, you know, any one of these groups um, and you have, you know, X amount, you know, there's a certain amount of ounces coming in your door because you know what the mines are going to be uh, uh, supplying you through your through your relationships with the refineries. So that silver is going to end up with your best customers. And that generally is the big commercials. You know, the, the Sony's, the, you know, the Toyota's, the Tesla's, the, you know, Samsung's of the world. You know, that, that's where most of that metal will go. And, and these banks have these long-term contracts in place whereby they're obligated, you know, to, to supply this uh, metal to them. You know, if there's anything left over, um, that might get into the minting system, might get into the retail system, whereby, you know, it allows retail individuals to, you know, actually participate uh, by buying metal. But that's just the scraps in the market. And that's why the premiums are so high, because these mints uh, are scrambling to try to get the, 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 the silver into their system so they could actually produce these retail products and no one wants to sell it to them. Well, we have, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, you know, but nothing goes straight up and then, and nothing happens overnight. I, I think that, um, you know, there's probably a bit of a battle going on between the paper and physical markets right now. You know, the, the, you know, the, the banks are used to running this market. Uh, you know, we saw what happened in Palladium. We've seen, uh, uh what's happened in other metals like, uh, uh, uh Cobalt and uh, another one that I watch, um, uh, geez, it's just I just lost the name of it, but um, uh, chromium. I know it was not chromium. Um, it was whatever. That doesn't really matter. But I was looking at buying it for three thousand bucks an ounce um, uh, a, a couple of years ago, um, and it's now thirty thousand dollars an ounce. And it's just like you know, um, you know, these these markets are the, the banks try to control them as best they can, but they are tiny little markets. And eventually, in my opinion, you know, the the physical market will take over. And, and, and it's just a matter of waking up the banks who are on the paper side of things and saying, holy cow, like our, our models are wrong. <clears throat> you know what, our, our trading is wrong. Uh, we're starting to lose money on this trade. It's not working like it has worked over the last 20 or 30 years. And we got to tell our traders to, to change their ways of trading, you know, um, you know, change their algorithm, algorithms or change or just get out of the market like Scotia's got out of the market. Um, just because the banks are sort of uh, losing money. Um, I think that's a bit, that's where we're going to be heading. Um, I still think, you know, Wall Street and Bay Street, I, th I still think they, you know, look at silver the same way they've always looked at silver as the poor man's gold. 